Welcome to Simply Learn's Backpropagation and Gradient Descent. My name is Richard Kirshner with the Simply Learn team. That's www.simplylearn.com. Get certified, get ahead. And when we're talking about backpropagation and gradient descent, we're talking neural networks. So we talk about the neural network. This is a simple neural network, which must be trained to recognize handwritten alphabets A, B, and C. And you can see here we have our input coming in. In this case, we'll look at the letter A written out on a 28 by 28 pixels. So the handwritten alphabets are presented as images of 28 by 28 pixels. And that image comes in. In this case, we have 784 neurons. That's 28 times 28. And the initial prediction is made using random weights assigned to each channel. And so we have our forward propagation, as you see here. So each node is then, their values are added up and added up and so on going across. And our network predicts the input to be B with a probability of 0.5. The predicted probabilities are compared against the actual probabilities and the errors calculated. So the error is simply the actual minus predicted. And you can see here where we know it's not C, so it's a minus 2. We know it's not B, so it's a minus 0.5. But we do know that it is a um, A, so we go ahead and adjust that by 0.6. The magnitude indicates the amount of change, while the sign indicates an increase or decrease in the weights. The information is transmitted back through the network. So here comes our back propagation. Weights throughout the network are adjusted in order to reduce the loss in prediction. So if we look at this setup right here, here comes our error. In this case, 0 0.6, minus 0 0.5, minus 0 0.2. That comes up and adjusts our 1.4.9, all our multipliers. In this manner, we keep training the network with multiple inputs until it is able to predict with a high accuracy. And you can see here we have a different A, quickly switches from cursive A to maybe a more elongated A. Similarly, our network is trained with the images for B and C too. So let's take a look at this. Uh, here's a straightforward data set. So let's build a neural network to predict the outputs given the inputs. And so we have an input 0, we expect an output of 0, we have an input of 1, we expect 6, 2 equals 12, 3 should come out as 8. 18 and 4 is 24. And we're just doing multiples of 6 if you take the time to look at it. So in our example we have our input and it goes into our neural network. So this box represents our neural network. One of the cool things about neural networks is they're always this little black box that you kind of train to do what you want. And you really don't have to know exactly what the weights are, although there are some very high-end setups to start looking at those weights and how they work and what they do. And then you get your output, which is going to be, uh, in this case our input's going to be x and our output's going to be y. And w is the weight. So we have a value times the weight. So if we're doing, in this case, just a single neuron going through, we have x times w. The network starts training itself by choosing a random value for w. We're going to guess that w equals 3. Just roll the dice, randomly generate the number 3 for w. And then we put w equals 3 in here. We have our input 0, or output 0, w equals 3 equals 0. So we have no error on the first line. That actually comes out correct. And then we have uh, 1 times, uh, we put the 1 in, we're looking for a 6, but we get a 3 instead. And we put the 2 in, we're looking for a 12, and we get a 6 instead. So you can see here our predicted output doesn't match the output we're looking for. And then um, we take this, we have our w equals 3, and we come up with a second model where the w equals 6. Now we're going to look at how we figure out w equals 6 in just a minute. That is part of the math behind this. But you can see here when we put in w equals 6, and we build the w equals 6 chart, we end up with 0, 6, 12, 18, 24, which is the output we're looking for. And in that manner, we end up with the correct answer, but we'll go ahead and put in a third model where w equals 9. So at this point, this is one way of doing this is just to guess what w equals. And you can see with w equals 9, we get the incorrect answers. We get 9, 18, 27, 36. We as humans can know just by taking a look at the data that our weight should be 6. But how does the machine come to this conclusion? So with that, we're going to have a loss function. The loss function is a measure of error which defines the precision lost to comparing the predicted output to the actual output. And it's simply loss equals actual output minus predicted output, and then we square the whole thing. So let's apply the loss function to the input value 2. Loss for our actual output, predicted output, squared. And our loss function for the input of 2, we end up with an actual output of 12, 
And you can see here with w equals 3, 12 minus 6 squared equals 36. So we end up with a loss of 36. w equals 6, 12. 12 times 12 squared equals, uh, 12 minus 12 squared equals 0. Or 12 minus 18 squared equals 36. And so you can see we have a huge loss on w equals 3 and w equals 9. We now plot a graph for the weight versus loss. And it always helps to have a nice visual of what's going on here. So this graphical method of finding the minimal of a function is called Called gradient descent and this is the logic behind this you can see as we come in here and we go ahead and graph the loss we have 36 for 3 and 36 for 9 we happen to guess 6 which was uh, the correct answer right in the middle and you can see right here it forms a nice little parabola and you can see a nice mark right in the middle and as a human being we can look at that and we go ah the answer is 6 a random point on this curve is chosen and the slope at this point is calculated so now we're getting away from the human aspect of just looking at it and saying what the answer is, and we look at what's going on with the math. And so we, if we have a positive slope, it indicates an increase in the weight, and a negative slope indicates a decrease in weight. This time the slope is negative, hence another random point towards its left is chosen. And you can see here we're actually kind of just playing a little high-low game going back and forth with the gradient descent. We continue checking slopes at various points in this manner. So we have our input, actual output, W3, W6, W9. We found our positive slope increased an increase in weight. A negative slope indicates a decrease in weight. A zero slope indicates the appropriate weight. So our aim is to reach a point where the slope is zero. And when we talk about neural networks, you're usually processing a massive amount of information and data. So you're not going to have all your data nice and neat where it's just a multiple of six it's going to be messy and so we're going to keep approaching that number but you'll never get everything to fit at zero you're going to get stuff all over the place and so you're really looking for the minimum value you're not looking for an absolute zero because you're not going to get it and so we're talking about gradient descent that's what we're talking about on there is finding the bottom of that curve even if it doesn't go all the way to zero so how do we apply that to our neural network well we use back propagation back propagation is a process of updating weights of the network in order to reduce the error in prediction and so the magnitude of loss of any point on our graph combined with the slope is fed back to the network and you can see here here's our simple model with just one node of x times w the input comes in we have our x times w the output and then we're going to propagate that loss going the other way a random point on the graph gives a loss value of 36 with a positive slope and we continue checking slopes at various points in this manner so a random point on the graph gives a loss value of 36 with a positive slope 36 is quite a large number this means our current weight needs to change by a large number a positive slope indicates that the change of the weight must be positive. Similarly, another random point on the graph gives a loss value of 10 with a negative slope. 10 is a small number, hence the weight requires to be tuned quite less. A negative slope indicates that the weight needs to be reduced rather than increased. After multiple iterations of back propagation, our weights are assigned the appropriate value. And you can see here we have our, our input we just looked at, x times 6 in our output, and eventually we get it that the weight is 6 for the single node problem that we're working on right now. At this point, our network is trained and can be used to make predictions. Let's now get back to our first example and see where the back propagation and gradient descent fall into place. And you can see here we're not looking at a single node anymore. Now we have 28 by 28 grid or 784 inputs coming into the first level which has 784 nodes. Depending on how you build your neural network the next layer might also have 784 nodes or it might continually smallen depending on what you need and what's needed for that to uh, work. So as mentioned earlier our predicted output is compared against the actual output. And you can see our error over here actual minus prediction and then we go ahead and compute our loss. So the loss of A is uh, 0.7 squared equals 0.49. Loss of B is uh, 0.5 squared or 0.25 and so on. Uh, so now we have our first iteration on there. So weights throughout the network are adjusted in order to reduce the loss in prediction. And of course we do that by doing a second iteration coming through with our different losses on there. And then weights throughout the network are adjusted in order to reduce the loss in prediction again underneath the second. And we do a third iteration. And we just keep 
doing these iterations going back until we get the right value. Now you got to remember that when we're doing a reverse propagation, we're not looking at just one letter A. We're looking at hundreds of letter A's. And usually we propagate that loss going backwards. We only take a small piece of it. So our adjustments are very small because one of them is not correct. We don't want to create a bias. So when we talk about back propagation, we're talking about going through over and over and over this data until we get minimal loss for our letter A. So let's focus on the minimal loss for our variable A. And you can see here, we look at that, we end up, uh, we'll assume for below to be our graph for the loss of prediction with the variable A as compared to the weights continuing it from the second layer. And we have our loss of A for 49, for 16, for 0.04. And you can see it makes this nice curve where we can guess where the bottom of this curve is. And I like it on this graph that they show that the curve doesn't rest, yeah, on the x-axis. It doesn't rest at where y equals zero because you usually don't get that. You don't get a perfect fit on anything, or very rarely do you ever get a perfect fit. And so the random points chosen on the graph is now back propagated through the network in order to adjust the weights. So we're able to go back through the network and readjust those weights until we find that minimal value. The network is run once again with the new weights. This process is repeated multiple times till it provides accurate predictions. The weights are further justify, adjusted to identify B and C too. Uh, and this is interesting because you actually do them at the same time. Uh, so as the error goes back, you kind of find the overall error for all the inputs coming in, and then that's what gets propagated going back, or the overall loss. Kind of have to step away from that word error because it's not just about the error, it's about the loss. The weights are further adjusted to identify B and C too. And so a lot of times you actually do them all at the same time, but um, you'll adjust those weights A, B, and C, as I was just saying. Thus, through gradient descent and back propagation, our network is completely trained and we've taught it to identify A, B, and C coming forward. One of the interesting things about neural networks is the training process takes a lot longer than the predicting process. So you can plan one of these training neural networks doing the back propagation to uh, significantly longer because you're going over thousands of data points. And then when you actually run it forward, it's very quick, uh, which makes these things very useful and just really part of today's world in computing. I do want to thank you today for joining us. For more information, visit www.simplylearn.com. Get certified, get ahead. Also feel free to make posts here on the YouTube video as we do have monitors to check them. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.